So I think that uh, we can start. Again, uh, welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you to join this presentation. First of all, a really brief introduction about myself. I am Marco Perry and I work for uh, Franskol since 10 years as R&D and now also technical support manager. This presentation, uh, the presentation of today is about two-stage compressors. So when you need to go low, so at very low temperatures. After the presentation, you are uh, much more than welcome to do every every question that you have, and I will try to answer you or during the time that we have uh, here connected, or I will write you privately. So we can we can start. So over to you the presentation. It's written here when you need to go low because I will talk about the two stage compressors. A very short view on the agenda of today. There will be a fast code overview. So with fast code and what we did, what we do. There will be the features and benefits of the two-stage compressor with a nameplate explanation, all the model designation, our product range, so the compressors available, the operating limits, then the, what is standard and what is optional. So we'll see several possibilities. Um, a little bit more detailed explanation about the model cooling system that is an exclusive that uh, we have and finally the conclusions uh, with all uh, with a resume of all the things that we have seen frasco frasco produce uh, compressors reciprocating compressors screw compressors and open compressors what are our segments our segments are everything related to refrigeration and air conditioning so we can talk about commercial refrigeration, about process cooling, industrial refrigeration, and also comfort. Important, what is our mission? Our mission is to offer innovative solution, become a partner for our customers. When a customer has a special project or a project in which uh, the customer itself wants to uh, explore new ways or to have a particularly high performance or whatever, we can be the right partner. Uh, that's why we wrote here innovation business partner because we just not uh, give you the product, but we can help you with through our know-how and through what we know. We can help you in find some innovation with a very very uh, important look at efficiency improvement. You know perfectly due to directives or due to environmental issues, the efficiency is always more and more and more important. So this point cannot uh, can this this point is absolutely fundamental. In addition to we can say that we give you not only the product but uh, solutions at 360 degrees through our software, selection software, a software that can calculate the seasonal performance and so not all the performance in a point. We have a code room calculators that help, that help the producer to decide the correct compressor and so on. So we can give you assistance, full assistance through our softwares and clearly through mails and telephone for every, for every issue that a customer can have. Here a little bit for our reciprocating compressors, what we uh, what we produce. On the right, there are the natural refrigerants, Atex for other carbons and subcritical and transcritical CO2. This has been explored by the presentation from colleagues, from other colleagues. Instead, today I will focus uh, for the standard refrigerant for the two stage compressors. 
so let's say a very particular segment because the two-stage compressor are used to reach very low evaporating temperatures. It can be with evaporating temperatures until minus 65, minus 70 Celsius degrees. And the two-stage compressor are also a little bit particular because the very low application are the only one out of FCAS regulation. So if you evaporate at minus 60, for instance, you, you are allowed and uh, you, you can use R448 that for other segments clearly is uh, forbidden. Let's see more in detail. Two-stage compressors and our, our models, 2V and 2Z, designed and engineered by eliminating external conduits. So if you look, and then we will do it, a two-stage compressor, it seems almost a standard compressor. You just notice a different position of the valves. We will see better uh, later. So there are no external conduits for the interstage, like the big majority of uh, uh, two-stage available, uh, two-stage compressor available on the market. In addition to, we have a special system that uh, is has been the motor cooling system that has been designed to give a cooling, fresh cooling of the motor only when there is the needing. So it's a prevention for the motor overheating, but the motor is not constantly cooled down by uh, by refrigerant, but only when it's needed. So we will say that there is a valve, there is a system to check the internal motor temperature and decide to open or not the valve in order to cool down or not the motor if it's necessary. Here how the compressor looks like. Without the external pipes, the compressor itself becomes very, very compact, more compact. There are no pipes, external pipes. What you can see on the right is just the economizer. That is an option that there can be or not, a subcooler kit or economizer. The compressor itself is very reliable and strong. The liquid injection is optimized, and we will see how, with the exclusive motor cooling system. The total efficiency of the machine, so it's increased, and the operation are really, really silent. Here are an example of the name plate. Clearly on the left high, we can see the manufacturer threshold. We can see the displacement here clearly being a two stage compressor. This is the first and the second stage. The type of lubricant, all the certifying labels, all the electrical data, and clearly the name of the compressor and the serial number. We can see here the model de designation. The name itself of the compressor is really, really simple to understand because in this case, 2Z30, 30, 30 means the motor size, so the HP at 50 Hz. In this case, 30 HP. We have two-stage compressor from 5 to 40 HP. These two numbers divided by a dot just to give you the capacity of the first of the second stage. So in this case, 51 and 102. Our biggest instead is 123. The minimum is 26. Here, yeah, just the type of oil, and the big majority of cases is just POE, POE oil, and other can be available on request. Here, a little bit the product range, more in detail. For the S series, that are the two smallest, we have only two models with five or seven HP. And the displacement is 1626 or 1927. For the V compressor, in reality, it's only one compressor. It's 10 HP, 29, 
42 the first stage and 29 cubic meter per hour for the second stage. The most interesting uh, series is the 2Z. So it's a compressor with uh, three heads, three cylinder, six cylinder, two cylinders per head. We have totally six models. And here we have the bigger that is uh, 123 cubic meter per hour in the first stage and the 62 cubic meter per hour in the second stage with the 40 HP motors. So it's the biggest two-stage compressor available uh, on the market. Here, what we have, we have the operating limits with 448A and 449A. It, it can work with evaporating temperatures until minus 65 degrees. So it's clear that a standard compressor arrives until a single stage compressor arrives until minus 35, minus 40. That's why I said that these compressors are dedicated when dedicated to applications where you really need to go low. Can uh, can talk about cryogenic uh, segments, applications, uh, or uh, other process, industrial process also, that when you need uh, really to go deeply in uh, blast freezers on in very, very low temperature freezers. These uh, family of compressors and with also these refrigerants are always available in our Frasco selection software that is uh, for free and you can download always from our uh, website www.frasco.com. So very, very easy. You will find in the software also the application envelope with 404A until minus 70 because I, as I have mentioned at the, the beginning, the F gas does not apply for cell uh, temperatures below minus 50. So we can say evaporators between minus 55 and lower are not in F gas. So it means that if find it and it's available however in this area you can use for 4a and you can use uh, this refrigerant also in the future also in the next years i repeat the problem is if it will be available uh, so for the for the next years also this envelope clearly is uh, is available this envelope and all the performance in every point it's available in the first called uh, selection software Here we can see the difference with a 3D drawing with subcooler or without. So we have two, two options in our software. We give all the information needed to, uh, to build by, by yourself the subcooler. Otherwise, we give you a subcooler with a filter, with a solenoid valve, uh, with uh, the side glass and with expansion valve needed and clearly with the heat exchanger needed to do the, the subcooler and this it's already mounted by, by us. In the standard control, there is also inside the electrical box a control card. We will see it uh, uh, deeply in the next slides. The liquid injection surround valve, that is the one mounted on the flange that is well visible in both, uh, in both drawings, uh, totally at the right, so mounted on the motor flange right. And the oil pressure switch to check that the oil pump is working correctly, the Delta P2. <coughs> Sorry. So here is the standard extent of delivery that allow you to connect it with the, the big majority of controllers already present on the market. The Delta P2 must be connected to the main panel and gives you an alarm in case of problem uh, with the oil pump. Instead, the uh, control injection card gives you an alarm in case of high temperature and needs an input to understand if the compressor is on or off. As a standard, we supply also a toroid that is very simple to be put in the power supply 
to the compressor cable and so you can use this toroid to give the signal on or off compressor to the device otherwise if the toroid is not used you can give it give to this device a simple on off signal this is our standard this is the basic wiring Okay, this is uh, the first option, is to add, in addition to the components that you already seen, a diagnose module that what, uh, what, uh, what it does is to give you more information about errors, about the number of switching on and off, about how many times the compressor remain on, and uh, so on it gives you diagnostic features it gives you a lot of information about how the compressor is working in what way if it's very near to the threshold if it's far from the threshold so you can understand if the compressor is working properly in a good way or not another possibility is to use uh, another uh, press switch instead of the delta p2 the ent 250 fr that is connected directly to this device to the ent 1690 ml diagnose it allows you not to go to the main panel but is controlled directly from it instead the part of the injection card and the toroid is exactly the same for both the three systems <clears throat> So here we have a very brief uh, resume. Standard, there is the injection card. We will see later very precisely all, this, all the functions. And there is the Delta P2. In the option one, we just had diagnose to a diagnostic function. And in the option two, we substitute the Delta P2 with the int 250 fr just to have a more simple connections between these two devices, the ENT69 and the press switch itself. Okay, let's see very, very in, uh, in detail the injection control card. What is the function of this device? This device check the motor temperature and decide depending from the motor temperature if the motor itself need an injection of fresh refrigerant or not so the motor temperature is not only like in a standard compressor like in other dense compressors and on off where you can see if the motor temperature is okay or the temperature is in alarm but it's we will see later a little bit more linear sensor so we can understand okay the motor is becoming too hot i do not stop the compressor but i become to inject some fresh gas if it's enough the compressor can work if the motor temperature goes down the motor becomes fresh i lock this fresh gas injection because i don't need that uh, i don't want that the motor flange becomes covered by ice so i stop it instead if the motor temperature is increasing i open to inject fresh fresh uh, gas inside the motor but the temperature is still increasing clearly i need an alarm signal so resuming a little bit all the benefits there is a constant and accurate control of the motor temperature the motor cooling is efficient because it's done only if needed otherwise it's not done in this way the reliability of the motor itself and so of the total compressor is absolutely increased and there is the prevention of motor overheating and the liquid injection is not constant is not done uh, as soon as you switch on the compressor but it's all it's monitored so it's only if it's needed here is our ams sensor that is inside our uh, motors as i said you before we have here a zone where 
the ohmic value of the resistors inside the, uh, the PTC AMS sensor inside the motor is uh, flat. So what does it mean? If you are from 70 to 100 degrees, that it means that the motor temperature is increasing, but is however below the threshold, we have time. And what we do here, we inject fresh refrigerant in the motor. If, however, we go over 110 degrees, there is an alarm, and it's correct in this way to prevent the motor burning. If the temperature goes below 70 degrees, and so the ohmic value is 0.4 kilo ohm, there is absolutely no needing, no needing of uh, injection, and so we stop the injection. So we call this zone pre-alarm zone. It's the zone where the control car device switch on the solenoid valve and inject the liquid in the motor. So a very safe system for the motor itself and so for the compressor itself. Here is what I say before, the, the area, the zone where we can add to prevent motor overheating. It's all this part, and I repeat, it's from 70 to 100 degrees. As I said before, even if the injection is on, but the temperature continues to increase, clearly at that point we have to stop the compressor. But look at the standard PTC that are inside of the compressor. In this case, you have the area in which you cannot do anything, and then errors. So alarm and so compressor stopped. In this case, there is not the possibility to make something with our system. Sorry, with our system instead, we can do something. We can inject only if it's needed. And in this way, we prevent stopping of the compressor that obviously can create always uh, problems uh, to the final system, the final user. Okay, so here are a resume of what we have seen. We have uh, the wider two-stage uh, range available on the market. There is the availability to many refrigerants, and uh, remember that we have uh, Frasco as a laboratory, and so we have tested this type of compressors with uh, several refrigerants, and then we have transferred the data tested and measured in the software. Another fundamental point is the safety and reliability of the system, thanks to the special sensor that we have put inside the motor that can allow us to do the cooling of the motor only if it's needed. And this is absolutely a step increase in safety and reliability of motor, so of the compressor. Okay, so thank you very much to follow this presentation. And now I stop sharing the screen and I will look if you have made some question. As I said before, do not worry. I will try to answer the question. Otherwise, I will reply you um, by private mail. So do not do not worry. Okay, here we have uh, uh, some question. So uh, the first question is: uh, with room temperatures minus twenty five, so probably an evaporating temperature at the limits minus. 35 minus 40. Is it better to use single stage or double stage compressor? It's a different philosophy. In the single stage uh, compressor, perhaps you are uh, to the limit of the envelope of the single stage. And so, depending from the condensing temperature, it can be that you go over, over this limit, over, I mean, outside the application envelope. 
so you have to think about uh, um, fun on the heads uh, or probably it's not enough to decrease the discharge temperature or you have to put uh, some external liquid injection so however the system becomes complicated in the two stage if you work at minus 40 you are in the middle let's say of the envelope so absolutely no no problem and uh, it can be but uh, we have to see with the software it can be that uh, it can be that uh, the, the efficiency is much more higher with a two-stage compressor so it depends from the application there is not uh, an answer that it's yes or no but it can be However, it can be the case to uh, evaluate at least both solutions. And I repeat, both are uh, in our selection software or in case you can always ask us and we will be pleased to, to absolutely to, to help you uh, find what is the better, uh, the better solution. Okay. So, sorry for it, I have to drink a little bit and then I will read the second question. <clears throat> okay, second question is uh, um, single, uh, double stage compressor, sorry, double stage compressor, if can be used or not, uh, with uh, propane actually our uh, our two-stage compressor is not uh, at tech certified however if there is some interest from some uh, customer absolutely feel free to 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 write and to ask me more information um, at the moment i don't have in mind i mean we received no questions no 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 issues, let's say, from other customers that want to use propane and um, propane and uh, two-stage compressor. However, if it's of your interest, we can uh, we can talk uh, we can talk about uh, we can talk about it. We can talk about it and discuss it uh, in, uh, privately. Clearly, as uh, all ATEX application uh, modules uh, cannot be put uh, in ATEX zone and so on. So there is uh, something, uh, something to, to clarify and to discuss. But if it's of your interest, we can, uh, we can discuss about. So please uh, contact me by mail uh, privately and uh, there, is, uh, there is no problem. We can discuss further. Okay, I can see uh, for double stage compressor, do you need add cooling fan for high ambient area when temperature reach plus 48? Well, it clearly depends from the evaporating temperature, not only on the uh, ambient temperature that is related to the condensing temperature. However, we can say that for big majority of cases, uh, there is no need enough uh, of that fund. So we can uh, discuss case by case. We can see in the, in the, in the with the thank to the software, we can see we can see what happens. But uh, in uh, let's say in the 99% of cases, the fund is not uh, is not necessary. Okay, sorry. Okay, so I have a question about uh, if I uh, recommend to use ENT69 diagnose or not. As uh, we have seen in, we have seen in the presentation is an optional. So in uh, some cases it's not used. Someone who wants to know 
steeply how the system works, how many times uh, the compressor switch on for how many minutes. If you want only to know about the errors, why the compressor is stopped by the modules and so on, it's useful to put it. But I repeat, the, our standard is uh, without. So really, really depends. Uh, really depends from uh, from the application and the interest of the customer. It can be, it surely it can be used because uh, we put it uh, in uh, in the optional list. But it's up to the customer to decide if the customer has some doubt or uh, some uh, issue to understand uh, it more deeply. Surely I can uh, write in a, in a private mail without any any problem. Okay, let's see through the question. Um, th there is a question asking me if this two-stage compressor can work with CO2. No, I don't know. This um, two-stage compressor, the, the two-stage compressor that I have uh, shown you in uh, with the range uh, in the presentation are for standard refrigerant, not 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 for CO2. However, uh, um, let's uh, contact me in, in private and uh, also in this case we can, uh, we can see if it's possible to do something also with CO2. Okay, so a uh, lot of questions, thank you. Mm -hmm. Why in T two fifty FR instead of delta P two. It's just uh, two different possibilities of connection. Delta P two need the power supply and need to be controlled by a controller. So you have to uh, wire it to the controller and you have to to supply the power supply to this device. The NT two fifty it's only two cables to be connected to the diagnose. So in this case, you don't need to, to supply power supply. You don't need to connect it directly to the uh, controller. As I said before, for the diagnose, it's an option. So it's something that you can decide to use or not. OK. Uh, this is an uh, interesting question. How do you control the amount of liquid refrigerants injected into the motor to avoid droplets on the suction side? <coughs> so the uh, capillar has been chosen by us also the valve. As I said, the uh, liquid is injected only if needed. And if needed, it means that the motor is very hot. So it means that every thing that go inside the motor is immediately uh, condensated by the motor itself, by the temperature of the motor itself. So for the suction, there is absolutely no, no, no problem. Two stage compressor, remember that it's not like standard compressor. The two the valves, suction and discharge are on the same side because the suction valve is where usually there is a discharge valve. The discharge valve is directly on the head, so they are both on cylinder side. So there is absolutely no no problem and uh, no issue in putting uh, some uh, some cooling refrigerants inside the motor, and there is I repeat, there is absolutely no problem on the suction side. Okay, again, uh, CO2, but uh, I have to, <clears throat> to repeat that these compressors are not, uh, um, are not for CO2. They have a standard uh, pressure, maximum standard pressure. It's 20 bar in the low pressure, 30 in the high pressure. So 
it cannot uh, be be used uh, with CO2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, some other question related to it's better to use um, single stage or two stage. It's not, not easy to answer uh, one or the other. Clearly, it depends from the application, it depends from evaporating temperatures uh, and so on. There is some limit case in which both can be, can be used. Uh, repeating the selection software you can use both and in case of uh, any doubt you can always uh, you can always write me and we can discuss uh, further together to understand uh, to, to understand uh, what is better These uh, two stages are uh, question. These two stage compressors are uh, done with the pistons. So uh, it's what I said S and V are uh, four cylinder compressor. So two cylinder used for the first stage and two for the second, clearly of different uh, diameter. Instead, the Z compressor have two heads, so four cylinder for the first stage and one head, so two cylinders for the second stage. However, we are uh, always talking about uh, a piston compressor. It's not a screw compressor. There is a question uh, if the economizer is needed. Well, uh, economizer can be really important to improve uh, cooling capacity and also uh, efficiency. But you can uh, see immediately in the selection software, because in our selection software, there is uh, the possibility to put or not the economizer. So you can see immediately what happens if you put the economizer. That is the, cooling capacity increase a lot, the, the, sorry, the power input increase, yes, but a little bit less, so the CO, total COP increase. This is uh, more and more true, more you go to low temperatures. So perhaps if you are at the extreme right of the envelope, minus 25, minus 20, probably the advantage is uh, quite uh, low. But if you are on the other side at minus 70, the advantage is incredible big. So lower is the evaporating temperature, bigger is the advantage in using the economizer. <clears throat> we, however, give the possibility to, to use this compressor, let's say, without economizer, but in some cases, it's because uh, just the customer want to use uh, their own built economizer or the position where we have designed the economizer is not, uh, let me say, is not good for that customer because in that area, he has something other that uh, does not allow to put the economizer there. And so they want to build their own economizer in another position. But to be honest, let's say that the 99% of this implantation has the economizer because usually at low temperature, the, the, advantages, the advantages given by the economizer is high, is, uh, is quite high. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and have a great uh, exhibition. Thank you. Thank you again.